The travel industry boomed last year, and although consumer spending is expected to slow this year, 2024 should still see good growth for the sector here. Now, one aspect that's coming back stronger than ever, corporate travel. All week long, we're diving into the travel sector as part of Yahoo Finance's Travel Guide 2024 Industry Insights. For more on the future of corporate travel, we've got Sebastian Bazin, who is the Accor CEO, here with us in studio. Thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks for having me. So what are you seeing right now in your business in the corporate travel rebound that many of the travel executives are, are spelling out to us? Well, I could say I was wrong three years ago. Three years ago, I thought corporate travel was going to go down by 20, 35 percent forever wow. because of Teams, Zoom, ability to work uh, remotely. And I was dead wrong. It's actually back. Uh, it's a different mix. So the international what if executive for Microsoft or Boeing in Seattle probably is going to cut his trip by half if he, if he was to go to Seattle, go to Boston, go to New York, Singapore, because he can actually do it remotely. But because of this ability to work remotely, the same reason makes it that I guess a lot of people don't go back to the office, i.e. for any big companies like Accor to preserve the culture. Then you have, for the last 12 months, an enormous number of small groups 10 or 20 person from the same corporation in 20 different cities when they regroup together for a couple of days just to bond back together. And so as opposed to have international traveler coming alone, we have small groups of companies, people working in different location and that is corporate travel. Mm -hmm. So it's a different mix. It's almost back, but with a different kind of actually uh, clientele. You said it's almost back. So I guess what does the level look like compared to 2019? And are we going to get back to 100% of the level that we saw? Again, it's probably going to be vastly different between America and outside of America. Mm -hmm. So corporate travel in America is 90% domestic. Mm -hmm. For me, corporate travel has a lot to do with international corporate travel. Mm -hmm. So we're probably 10% lower than 2019. Mm -hmm. And we're likely going to be probably 3 or 4% up at the end of this year compared to 2019. As you look across your property portfolio right now, where does it make sense to identify more opportunities to add to that portfolio, or, or where are you scaling back right now based on the environment? That well, we're not scaling know? back. Okay. It's, uh, it's still a blessed industry. We're probably going to have all of us, all my peers on our core, a better year in 2024 than we had in 2023. You have a decelerating growth of the price per room, but it's still growing. And I don't know whether it's going to be 2 or 5% this year, but way off from 15 or 20% last year. But you're still going to have a scarcity of supply, new supply coming on. Uh, you still have a large market share for all of us. And two, you have a growing demand. You have a billion five international travelers as of 2019. We're still 3% below 2019, and a part of the billion five people don't realize. China was 150 million, America 150 million international travelers. But India was only 35 million. And the emerging middle class out of India is going from 300 million to 800 million people the last five years. Mm -hmm. So you're going to see India going up from 35 million international travelers to 80, 90, 120, matching up with China and the US. That alone has a huge impact on the hotel hospitality in the world. And Accor is probably the best beneficiary of it because they're going to go three or four hours west or east. So they're going to go to Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Malaysia, Singapore, or they're going to go west. They're going to go to Sub-Saharan Africa, Egypt, and Middle East, where we have the largest market share. Mm. So you're going to have more than a billion five international travelers the next probably two to three years. So demand's probably going to go three, four to six percent compared to three to five percent the last 20 years. Sebastian, when you talk about that uptick in demand, we have outside of the business travel space, we also have a couple of huge sporting events taking place, one of those being the Paris Olympics uh, this summer. How big of a catalyst is that for your industry and specifically for Accor? Not as big as I wish for. It's mm -hmm. probably for Accor, it's going to be half a percentage point in terms of ref power for the year. So it's going to be plus two and a half percent for France. Why is not that much bigger is because in France in July and August, it's pretty robust. Mm -hmm. So they're going to add maybe a 2% occupancy, so you go from 90 to 92%, but it's a bit anecdotal. Mm -hmm. it, does give, it does give a big flashlight on France at the country and destination, that's helpful. But you're going to have the European Soccer Cup in Germany, Austria in June. You're going to have the Olympics in July and August. You're going to have the America's Cup sailing in Barcelona. It's a hell of a good year, actually, for us in Europe mm -hmm. this year, so, which is remarkable. Just on the, on the labor side as well, how, how have you needed to perhaps moderate how the business operates given some of the higher labor costs as well right now? We've been increasing the low paid salary, the first entry salary, we've been increasing the salaries quite a bit. And we've been blind for too long actually, not accepting to pay those people more. 
Now, the main reason why people come back to the industry, and funny enough, those are not the guy who left us. It's actually newcomers. Mm -hmm. They're coming back as long as you can actually assure them a sense of purpose, human interaction, caring, emotional. A lot of people are moving away from the media telecom industry because being alone with your headset in front of your screen is pretty boring and depressing. Mm -hmm. uh, so as long as you can actually show to them that they're going to be able to evolve in their own career and do something when they actually do something every day and a lot of it is unforeseen event, mm -hmm. it's kind of a fun job. Yeah. Uh, so it's human interaction, uh, which is why I joined this industry from the financial industry. Much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Way more indeed. And it looks far better, especially when you get out of the office as well here. Sebastian, <laughs> thanks so much for taking the time. I'm here with Thank us you in so studio. Much. Sebastian nice. Bazin, who is the Accor CEO.